find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to you. have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show where we like to talk about independent pro wrestling here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, of course, a producer here in Pittsburgh, PA with uh, Sorgatron Media. i uh, doing IWCRWA with PittsburghWrestling.com. And uh, with me on the line, as usual, is my co-host, my cohort. He's Eamon at Eamon to please on the Twitter uh, and the uh, commentator for NWA Inspire Pro as well as writer with NWA Ringside Magazine has, has yes, come out this past week. Uh, well, the actual magazine hopefully will be out in the coming weeks, but they did release the uh, the uh, front cover for it, which is their year in, year in review issue, and, and that's my first uh, issue of Games Rent for them, so I'm awesome. excited about that. Congratulations. So keep, an eye, keep an eye out on NWA Ringside when that does uh, it, it, It's a cool it, – it's weird because we're, you know, people doing internet things with podcasts <laughs> and stuff. But to get your name in print still like holds weight. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's it's awesome either way. So I'm I'm excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, of course, this is your Indie Mayhem show. We're here every Tuesday night about 11 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com, 10 p.m. Central time, of course. Uh, thanks for our intro for Basic Sickness. Check him out at basicsickness.com for more free music and videos. And you can check out more about what we do over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. we got a whole slew of shows about pro wrestling over there, five in all, including a trivia game show that you guys have a lot of fun with on Thursdays. Um, and, uh, of course you can drop us a line, uh, we're at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or four one two two zero six WMS zero is the hotline. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, iHeartRadio, And of course, uh, you can follow at mayhem show or look for the wrestling mayhem show on Facebook or Google plus to talk about more pro wrestling independent or otherwise we were into, uh, talking about all kinds of stuff. So, uh, uh, Eamon, uh, your guest this week is from uh, a little more your next of the woods i think this week right yes yes it is uh, i'm very excited actually to have this guest on this is somebody that uh, uh has been making waves across texas wrestling and and beyond texas wrestling i'm sure this we'll get into for a good while now uh, for only over i would say like two years uh he's definitely one to look out for when it comes to uh texas independent wrestling and it's a pleasure to have him finally on the show uh ladies and gentlemen of the indie mayhem show please welcome moonshine mantel how are you doing tonight moonshine i'm doing great uh thanks for having me guys no problem. Uh, uh, sort of uh, the first question we like to ask uh, our guest uh, as sort of an icebreaker of sorts would be, uh, what is your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Okay. Um, I'd have to say my first memory of pro wrestling is being at my buddy uh, Kevin Powell. And uh, they were all into wrestling. You know, this is about fourth grade or so. They're all into it, and I used to just think wrestling. I used to shit on wrestling all the time, you know. I was like, "Oh, that fake crap," blah blah blah. And then uh, one night I was over there, and uh, he put in an old WCW uh, tape, and it was like from one of the pay per views. I don't know. It was back in like '96, and uh, you know, I just started watching it, and you know, gradually each and every time I'd go over there, I'd watch a little bit more and more of WCW, and uh, before you knew it, I was hooked. Awesome. Were there any specific names or? Or people that stuck out to you as as guys you sort of really enjoyed? Uh, definitely Sting. Sting is a uh, probably one of the guys who I most you know when when I discovered wrestling, I probably gravitated to him the most. Uh, just the whole thing with the NWO and uh, you know Raven. I was a huge Raven fan. He was the, he was the fucking man. And uh, yeah, that's you know those guys. Awesome, definitely. Um, now, now going transitioning towards you, you getting into professional wrestling. Now, did you have any sort of, uh, you know, athletic background before uh, uh, deciding that you wanted to uh, be a part of uh, professional wrestling? Um, athletically, my background, I, man, I played uh, high school basketball, but um, honestly, I was never a football guy. I was never a big, you know, a power lifter or anything like that. I just, uh, I knew. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a professional wrestler. And um, 
you know, I always had a love for basketball, but as I grew older, you know, I fell, uh, you know, I kind of fell out of love with basketball and uh, very much into wrestling. And uh, so I continued to play basketball and then finally, you know, decided to call it quits. And uh, I kept working out on my own because I knew, you know, if you want to make it in the business, you've got to look like the guys on TV. So, um, yeah, just started working out on my own and uh, slowly but surely fell in love with fitness and uh, actually ended up going to uh, college there at Texas State and uh, getting a degree in uh, exercise sports science. So, Awesome. And, and so. speaking towards that, I would definitely say, because you were the one of the guys I would say in Texas that, like, as far as look goes specifically, you, you definitely have that look that would say I would say would appeal to someone of a mainstream level. And I, and I would guess that that sort of background in fitness sort of aided in that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, my, you know, my goal from from ever since I can remember is to be a professional wrestler, you know, going to college. That's all like a backup plan. I never planned on going to college when I was in high school. Um, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a professional wrestler, but you know, the more research I did, the more, um, you know, I kept finding, uh, you know, I would read about advice, like people, guys, like guys like Mick Foley, you know, who, you know, would avidly advise all the guys getting into the business, you know, make sure you have something to fall back on, you know, cause you never know what can happen. Definitely. Absolutely. Uh, so as far as, um, uh, getting into, uh, finding an actual wrestling school, uh, where did you start your training? When did I start my training? Mm-hmm. Um, I started my training when, what year was it? Uh, oh, 2012, uh, September of 2012. I started training with, uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez. And, 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 you know, for those around Texas who definitely are really definitely uh, notorious for being, uh, 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 one of the top trainers in Texas. Uh, uh, what was it like sort of training under him and, and, and actually sort of, you know, running the ropes and, and learning, you know, how to, how to, you know, take it in all that is, you know, being a professional wrestler. It was, it was great. Um, what's great about Rudy is he, he treats, uh, he didn't, I'm sorry, he trains, um, all of his guys with a very old school mentality, you know, he, he does it right. Um, you know, everyone has to pay their dues. Um, everyone has to prove themselves, you know, but in training, um, it was great learning from under him because he's learned from a lot of the top guys in the business, you know, um, you know, from the Blanchard to broken men, um, to, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Um, mm. but yeah, Rudy was great. He's a great teacher. Um, he's not, you know, he's very, he can be very stubborn. Um, you may not agree with everything he has to say, but you know, at the end of the day, that's just, that's just Rudy. And anyone who knows Rudy, you know, that's the same thing. I, when I first uh, started training with him, you know, everyone told me, you know, that's Rudy's Rudy. And that's something you'll hear from everyone who really knows him, but he's a great guy. I love him. Awesome. Definitely. Um, now to talk about, you know, after training, uh, getting to wrestle your first match, because I, if I'm not mistaken, I actually had the pleasure of getting to see your first ever wrestling match. Uh, I believe it was for uh, Texas wrestling association. Uh, you wrestling uh, uh, Alex Reigns, uh, uh, one of your former uh, tag team partners uh, in Rain or Shine. Uh, and, I, and I remember uh, seeing uh, uh, and hearing that it was going to be your first match. And I think a couple of people who I was with sort of wanted to see, you know, because it's, you know, you know, a first person's wrestling match. You know, you sort of, you know, they're, they're sort of feeling things out for it. But I remember watching you wrestle Alex and, and seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, someone who kind of knew what they were doing and, and really – uh, I, that was probably, I think, one of my favorite matches of that show. Uh, uh, what was it like uh, actually getting into the ring for the first time? Oh, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. That, you know, that's what you dream about, you know, having your first match. And honestly, you know, at this point, I, know I haven't done much, you know, if anything, in my in my wrestling career thus far. But, uh, you know, that's just one of those things. Like, I could have died a happy man after that. You know, just having that first match and just being able, even though, you know, there's maybe like 50, 60 people in the crowd, you know, it's still a, it was a very awesome and surreal moment. And it was great because I had a lot of people uh, that I knew in the crowd um, who supported me over all the years. So, I mean, uh, you know, everyone who kind of rooted for me to get into this I knew how much it meant to me. So it was really cool. And working with Alex was awesome. I mean, he helped train me a lot, you know, when I was at the Texas Wrestling Academy as well. 
Awesome. Uh, now, you, you definitely, obviously, being Moonshine Mantel, uh, a bit of a a bit of a character of sorts. Uh, uh, what are if you do you have any sort of inspirations you sort of draw your character from, or is it a lot? Is it a lot of it maybe your personality coming through uh, uh, as far as as far as your actual character goes? Um, a lot of it's me. A lot of it's Terry Funk. Mm. Um, a lot of it's Mick Foley. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's Stan Hansen. I, I mean, if I had pointed three guys, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just me. You know, I like being wild. I like being crazy. I mean, I like to fight, you know, definitely. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I, I've also heard one person before, uh, I, when you, when you get that wild look in your eyes, you definitely have a, a, a Randy Savage S uh, look to you, which is that it's definitely very cool. Right? <laughs> and I, and I definitely see what, uh, what they're talking about, but absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, now to talk about something, uh, like I said, you've only been doing this, I would say for about uh, two years or so. Uh, you've already, yeah. got, you've already got to accomplish some really cool things, especially, uh, uh this S year. I know you did a little work uh, and training in Japan, actually. Uh, yeah. Uh, how did how did that kind of come about? Uh, getting the opportunity to go to Japan because I've been, if I'm not mistaken, you trained under the uh, in the uh, Kaintai Dojo. Yeah, yeah. I trained at the Kaintai Dojo for a few months this past summer um, under Takamichi Noko. Um, how that came about is basically I I, uh, I kind of uh, met Funaki. And, uh, he kind of, he remembered me for, cause I did one of his clinics. Uh, I think it was maybe the second show I was ever on cause BOW let me on after that. Um, but I, he remembered me from his clinic, you know, I told him, Hey, you know, I'm really, I'm looking to travel over in Japan and, uh, I really want to go over there and, you know, learn more about the craft and just better myself, you know? Um, so basically from there, you know, he got all my information and he, you know, he's very, he was very awesome. He got back to me, you know, two hours after the show that night and, uh, you know, told me he already talked to Taka and, uh, that I need to send him all my information and basically just, you know, I was good to go from there. Awesome. Now, now going and training in Japan, uh, were, if you could sort of, you know, compare it or contrast it to, to the training that you experienced in Texas, uh, uh, how is it? How is it similar, and how is it uh, different? Um. <laughs> okay, the training over in Japan blows anything over here out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason I say that is, it's like the guys over there. When you're training over there, you know you live it. You know you move into the dojo. You know it becomes your life. That is your number one priority. Um, the thing about all the schools over here, you know, and there's nothing wrong. It's just, that's just how it is over there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when guys get into wrestling school over here, you know, they have jobs or they're going to school, you know, they have other distractions as in over there, you know, once you move into that dojo, it's, it's on, you know, mm -hmm. it's like signing up for college. You're there, you're there, you know? Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's great over there. You know, they train. Okay. It's kind of dojo, dojo. Uh, we were training about four days, four or five days a week. Um, each training session would last, you know, anywhere from four and a half to five hours, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just straight, you know, not much breaks in between, you know, we just do a lot of cardio for the first couple of hours and then we hop in the ring and do, you know, do the bumps and, you know, do the rolls and all that kind of stuff and go through uh, little drills in the ring for a couple hours as well. Um, it's just, it's intense, man. You know, they definitely, it's definitely like a boot camp like training. You know, you're out there running, doing sprints out in the yard. Um, you know, you're inside doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of squats. It's, it's just, it's great. I loved it because it really, you know, I was, I was starting to feel a little stale. Um, just everything, you know, here in Texas, uh, just cause I, I don't know what it was. I was just feeling stale mm -hmm. in wrestling. I wasn't giving it all, giving it my all like I should. And, um, so that's why I, you know, I wanted to go over there and train and just be, I mean, I was there to train. There's no other distractions, you know? Definitely. I, I definitely, it definitely seems as, as if you, you gained a lot from that experience. And then from the, some of the people I've talked to that have done some training in Japan, that, that definitely seems like to be a very, a very common occurrence. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, 
definitely a, definitely a big accomplishment, especially you know, yeah, being so young in your career. Uh, uh, just in general, in, in sort of your overall career, uh, if you can think of any uh, matches that you've had or, or opponents that you've gotten to face that sort of stick out to you as, as some of your favorites, uh, is there any that sort of uh, sort of come to mind? <laughs> uh, my most memorable match, and I remember it the most because it's it's the, the biggest beating I've ever taken in my life. And uh, this was I was maybe about three months into the business. I've had you know maybe ten matches. Um, I get called in to do uh, the Black Bart Benefit Show. Oh, okay. And I go there. Yeah. And um, so I go there, and I'm in the locker room, and, you know, nobody knows who the fuck I am. You know, I'm there, um, you know, with R- Rudy Boy's there. He got me on the show. Um, so I'm in there. Nobody knows who I am. You know, I introduce myself for like that, you know, and I see Black Bart just hiring me from across the way. And, uh, you know, eventually he comes up to me, you know, asked me who I was and everything like that. Got me the whole rundown and, you know, long story short, he just thought, he tells me that, that, you know, he likes my look and he's going to put me in the main event that evening. Oh, wow. So I was just kind of, you know, I was just very, even, even younger than I am right now into the business. And, um, so yeah, I was like, holy shit, you know, I'm going to be in there. And, uh, I was teaming with, uh, Canyon and, uh, we were going against, uh, Scott Putsky and uh the tokyo monster to vegas mm-hmm. so we go in there you know and it's all good you know i'm nervous as fuck you know going there with these guys and uh basically the reason i remember this match so much is because i took damn near and this is this is a shoot anywhere from 25 to 30 chops from those guys combined Jeez. and it was just just brutal like the crowd was silent because i was just it wasn't even a match. They just beat the fuck out of me, you know. But and they, it was, it was them, you know, testing me though. You know, they were doing just what the same thing that they, you know, went through when they were breaking into the business. You know, you got to have those people there to test you and see if, you know, it's like, oh, okay, you know, maybe this guy has a good look or whatever. Let's see what, he, you know, let's see if, if he bitches about it. You know, let's see if he mans up and just takes it. You know, so it was a great way to, you know, even though I was physically hurting you know mentally i you know i felt like i gained a lot that night because um i think i gained their respect awesome um also you know getting to work with uh the million dollar man ted DiBiase, you know cutting promos on each other and stuff like that you know uh that was surreal you know and uh a very awesome experience and i mean uh, all the matches i had over in japan you know i i I count them up and I was on, you know, while I was over there, I got to be on 14 different shows. And I mean, those guys over there really toughened me up, you know, and made me, it, you know, when, when a guy, when you can't speak the same language to a guy in a match, you know, mm-hmm. you're out there and you have to do your thing and everything, you know, some, some, <laughs> it makes it, you have to become a better worker. You know, you have no choice. Um, but those guys over there, you know, tested me, you know, physically, I mean, they beat the dog shit out of you, you know, <laughs> Um, but I love that. I love that, that kind of style. I love that, uh, hard, stiff, you know, I, I don't want to say stiff, but you know, mm. it's snug and it's just, that's, that's the kind of style I like, you know, I like going out there and, you know, having a fight with somebody. Awesome. Definitely. Um, now, now from the matches you've already had to sort of look into the future, I know, you know, 2015 is on its way and everyone's, you know, making resolutions, especially, uh, I would think a lot of wrestlers as well. Uh, uh, what are some of your goals going forward, uh, maybe into the new year and, and, and even further than that? Um, this next year, the, one of the main goals is to venture out more outside mm-hmm. of Texas. Um, I'm, I'm really going to work on starting hitting up all the, uh, you know, cause Texas is such a big state, you know, I mean, it's not like you, you go to the other states and you drive two hours and you're out of there. You know, there's, there's mm-hmm. promotions all up in North Texas that I really am um, excited to be uh, working toward in the next year. Um, I really want to venture out in Mississippi, Tennessee, go over to Florida, um, you know, all that East, East Coast. You know, I really, the main goal is to get out there more, you know, and just get seen and work, 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 because, you know, that's the only way to get better. Absolutely. Uh, now, uh, sort of a question that uh, we ask all of our guests here on the uh, Indie Mayhem show, and, and, and many of our guests have taken it uh, you know, different ways, uh, in, you know, covering different parts of, of independent wrestling in general, but uh, 
uh, feel free to take it however which way you like, but uh, the question we have for you is, uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the best and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Okay. Um, the best thing about independent wrestling, I mean, you got to love the independent wrestling fans, you know. Mm. Um, they're great. They're they're a bunch of know it alls, but <laughs> but it, you know they're passionate about it nonetheless, mm-hmm. and that's what it's all about. Um, also, you know, with the independent shows, depending on what kind of show you're on, you can learn a lot from some of the vets. You know, I mean, especially Inspire. You know, bringing in guys like Teddy Hart and Chris Hero. You know, and uh, Lance Hoyt. You know, you can learn a lot from those guys. Mm. Um, I would say the worst thing about independent wrestling is I don't think we protect it enough. I Mm -hmm. think um, there's too many guys who come in who aren't trained right, who don't respect the business, who give people even more of a reason to shit on wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and it's, you can't be mad at the guys. You know, I mean, that's just, they they weren't taught right, but it's just the promoters who continue to bring in guys who want to make a mockery of the business. And yeah, it's all good. You know, uh, there's a place on every show for a comedy match or, you know, but, you know, when, when guys just start goofing around out there, they're not taking it seriously. You know, that's, that's the shit I hate. But, um, I would say that's, there's just too many people, uh, too many outsiders who've come into the business as far as, you know, as far as workers go, you know, there's just, uh, there's too many, too many, I don't, too many workers out there, just bad workers. But, yeah, that, you know, that, I, I guess sort of one of the bigger things is just that, you know, I, I, and I hear it a lot, just the idea that like anybody can be an independent wrestler now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's not, it's not good, you know, cause it mm. just, you know, if you go to, especially if you're going to a wrestling show for the first time and you see a bunch of jack offs, you know, in a few matches, you're just like, ah, you know, you need guys out there who are worth it, you know, mm-hmm. guys out there who are worth paying that amount of money to see, you know, and uh, yeah, there's just too many assholes out there, but you know, it is what it is. Awesome, definitely. Um, well, well, first of all, thank you for uh, coming on. Uh, uh, if there's any place that people can uh, find you on the internet or if there's any uh, upcoming events that people can uh, check you out at, feel free to uh, to uh, plug away. Yeah. Um, well, you can check, you can get all the information about me uh, on my Twitter account at real underscore moonshine. And then uh, on, on hit me up on Facebook, man. I'm on uh, Shine Moonshine Mantel because I guess they didn't believe Moonshine was my first name, but they <laughs> believe that Shine was. So. It works out. Uh, and and uh, hopefully uh, some upcoming events for you. I know uh, you, I'm assuming you'll be at BOW. Uh, uh, as Absolutely, happened, I'll be there. Uh, as one of the BOW Sky Champions with uh, former guest uh, Killer McKenzie. Um, uh, definitely all around Texas. Uh, you can definitely check out Moonshine Mantel. And I encourage you too, because uh, definitely a, a young prospect that you should absolutely be checking out. So, so thank you again uh, for uh, coming on, and, and I believe me and Sorg uh, are now going to talk some of the happenings that are going on in independent wrestling. Thanks, Eamon. Great interview. Uh, I'm loving the guys that you're bringing up uh, uh, from the area down there. Learn a little bit about Texas wrestling. Texas wrestling. Wrestling. Check out check out Moonshine Mantel. I was I was thinking some of the videos here we were showing here uh, during the interview. Uh, he's got a cool style. Cool. Uh, uh, I, I need to definitely check out some more of his matches here. So. Absolutely. A lot of his uh, uh, Inspire stuff, especially not to plug Inspire, but is uh, re- some really, really fun stuff. So. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a couple. His name did come up. He's in at least one of the shows uh, that you guys still have for free up on YouTube if anybody wants to check that out, too. <laughs> so yeah, There's um, a really good uh, six-man elimination tag match that from our February show. Awesome. So. Uh, so big news in indie wrestling this week, actually, uh, if you, in, in, in the vein of new Japan pro wrestling, of course, they've been in the news lately cause, uh, there's going to be a pay-per-view coming up, 
uh, with Global Force Wrestling, with mm-hmm. with Jim Ross announcing over it. So <laughs> there you go. If you need that extra bit to watch it, um, and, and I know you've sent me some in the past where it's had the Japanese commentary, and and you know it's it's a little tough to watch. You know, mm-hmm. uh, with that part of it, you need the rest of the story. It's it's entertaining enough. But anyways, uh, but New Japan Pro Wrestling, according to uh, what is this site? Cage side seats. Uh, yeah. Where where I got my my news from for this one? Not my, I'm not a regular on cage side seats though. Uh, they're going to they announced a streaming service and with it their intent to compete with WWE. Yes, indeed. Oh my! So and, and they're even to the point where they are uh, selling it for nine ninety nine yen yen, which <laughs> uh, works out to let me see if they got I think got the number I here eight forty U S eight dollars and forty cents U S nine sixty Canadian and five thirty eight pounds euro or pounds yeah. i don't know what it is. I, I think that one's pounds I okay well, it might be the euro i don't know i'm not i'm not up one on of the, one of the two are you are one uk fan tell us what tell us what your currency is um so 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 apparently previously their big event shows such as wrestle kingdom uh cost 1800 to 3500 yen Yes. So you know, in that this is definitely a big price drop. It's going to be so, a big price drop for that. It's nine ninety nine yen. It, it looks like it's more or less comparable to what we're doing with the pay per views with WWE, where we're it, undercutting it, from them. What I, from what I hear, it's going to be very similar to the network, uh, up to the fact that they will even be they're you know releasing their live content and they'll also be doing a lot of like specials like sort of stuff. So yeah. it it'll be very very similar to what the network is putting out uh, currently. That's cool. That's cool. So, so they're going to get their version of this, um, which shows everything going towards this model. Yeah, now, definitely. I, and I mean, their con- their content library is really, really immense. I mean, th- these guys have been running since '74. Like, you know, the, the the amount of of content that's in there. You know, uh, of so many different wrestlers, and 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 you know, from other you know you know work with other promotions and stuff like that. Obviously. Uh, I'm assuming, like in the peak of when WCW started working with uh, the Japanese talents, you'll see a lot of that in there. Uh, I know one of the big sort of marquee matches that you can definitely check out is Antonio Inoki wrestling Hulk Hogan. So definitely, you know, if you're into that kind of stuff, if you're into Hogan in Japan back when he was, you know, actually kind of wrestling and being, you know, not just Hulk Hogan. <laughs> but um, definitely go check that out. Um, uh, I and like I said. Uh, uh, it's actually there's no English version of it currently. It's all in Japanese. Um, uh, obviously, there's certain you know you you kind of had to have a basis of knowledge for sort of New Japan Pro Wrestling to sort of you know get like oh that's this show and and this is that you know that show and this wrestler. Um, but uh, definitely, and I'm sure you can do like some like Google Translate something or other stuff. But it obviously, it won't be completely accurate. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, there's also a, a if you uh, follow on Twitter, uh, I forgot what his actual like at Twitter name is, but if you search Senior Lariatso, he's a guy that posts a lot of gifs of, of New Japan Pro Wrestling stuff. Uh, he actually went like step by step how you sign up for New Japan Pro Wrestling World, uh, since all the sign up is in Japanese. He he he's laid it out step by step of how to actually sign up uh, for those that want to uh, sign up for the service. So awesome. Um, so definitely, I, I would encourage you. Uh, currently, I'm, I, I I'm at the point. Obviously, maybe you know, a lot of having it to do with me being a college student, but uh, I can't actually afford both the network and this. Um, I I can possibly see myself dropping the network and picking this up. Obviously, not in the near future, but um, definitely if if New Japan keeps rolling out more content and. And, and stuff like that, the, you know, this could be a contender, I really think. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and their, their projected numbers uh, of what they expect to get are actually, I mean, they're much lower than, than uh, WWE's, uh, which, which is to be expected. And I imagine they're not a publicly traded company that has bigger, bigger expectations. No, not at all. Uh, uh, you know, I, obviously, I'm not sure, you know, I don't know the exacts of how that sort of, you know, works for New Japan, but... Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's interesting. But like like I said, they've got, I would say, just as immense of a of a tape library as WWE. It's just because it, it's just that it's from one promotion. It's not from multiple mm. promotions, you know. 
good. I think that's, I think that's kind of you know the the difference in the two. And, and we've talked about this having uh, you know we've seen you know, like ch- your Chikaros and your Ring of Honors having their versions. Uh, mm-hmm. pre WWE network of an online all you can eat kind of thing. Um, I like this. I, I, I like to see that something big like this, and I hope there is an English version in the future. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I if, mean, you know, sure. I, WWE is, is still rolling out their uh, foreign versions as we speak. They, I mean, Vince was just talking last night about the troubles uh, getting them into the UK, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, for this to be another option, that'd be great. You know, and it maybe, you know, diehard fans, maybe like you or, or me, could maybe, if the budget's an issue, switch off. You know, like, like this is going to be a New Japan month. This is going to be a WWE month, you know, or something yeah, like that. Uh, I think I think it's tremendous. Good, good to see. Good to see. Uh, it'll be it'll be fun to follow this story and see how it develops. I definitely I I I'm happy that New Japan, with the stuff of like getting on pay per view and 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 being an an English version for the people you know uh, who actually want to you know sort of understand the intricacies of everything. Uh, I'm excited that's happening. I def- as soon as a uh, the Japan show comes out, which is, I mean, it's only a month away from the actual pay-per-view. Uh, so I, I definitely want to have a discussion, hopefully maybe on the Indie Mayhem show when that, when that does happen uh, about, about that event and, and sort of the, how people feel about new Japan pro wrestling opening, opening up the, the greatness of new Japan to a, to a new uh, uh, audience. Nice. Nice. Hey, I, I, we got to mention this. It wasn't on our rundown here, but we're being reminded of this profusely in the chat room by Alex Cars, our friend mm-hmm. out in uh, Long Beach or yeah, Long Beach, California. Uh but you know Chikara has an eye pay per view coming up. This weekend actually. This weekend uh, uh, they're uh, uh on the sixth, which is a Saturday. Yes. Yes. Say Saturday. Um their Tomorrow Never Dies event, uh which is a, it's an eye pay per view. They're returning uh to the old ECW arena, which is now nice. the twenty three hundred arena, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, they're doing some stuff there. There's some big stuff happening. Uh, definitely a lot of their big feud stuff, uh, coming to a head, uh, Icarus versus Ducalion, which is the big, uh, uh, leader of the flood in a steel cage match, uh, which is the only, which is the second ever steel cage match in Chicago. The first being between, uh, current WWE stars, Cesaro and, uh, Luke Harper. Um, there's going to be a, a cybernetico match. There's, um, you know, uh, a lot of really cool stuff. Campiones are defended. Young Lions Cup. Uh, there should be some really cool stuff coming from Chikara, and, and it's on iPay Per View through Smart Mark Video. Uh, so there's definitely you know an opportunity to go check it out. Uh, it nice. Seems like there's going to be some big things happening uh, on that event. Chikara always worth checking out. Something different. Something fun in professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. So. Um, other shows, we got some shows coming up here in Pittsburgh alone. Uh, our friends with Vicious Outcast Wrestling, we've talked to uh, some members of that group, <clears throat> excuse me, in the past. Uh, they are having their two year anniversary. Congratulations to them. Uh, with Rhino of ECW, WWE, and TNA fame is going to be there. Uh, ask, I had a great conversation one time about Boating uh, in the past. Uh, and, of course, some familiar faces on that poster as well. Andrew Palace, recent Super Indie Champion over at IWC. Generation Dead, who seems to be growing as a faction over there. Uh, mm-hmm. All kinds of uh, uh, guys are going to be there. Chris Russo, God, we haven't talked to him forever on the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> show. Uh, and again, you know, one of the few groups that has regular uh, women's wrestling. That's going to be Friday night if you're down in Connellsville, PA, at the Ice Mine, Friday, December 5th. Uh, ViciousOutcastWrestling.com. And, of course, they have on their U- I think on their YouTube page they've been posting, uh, yes, episodes of their TV show that they've been running on local cable access, actually. Uh, mm. So if you want to check out what they're about, and they really, I think they got their production uh, really up to snuff right now. Now, uh, a really decent quality show. Uh, I haven't watched through like one of their TV shows yet, but I mean, I've been watching a bit from when they pass over the digital downloads. We do have it over at PittsburghWrestling.com. A lot of their shows, uh, the last being September Sin with Sabu versus G Raver. Uh, crazy, crazy match. I got to talk to G Raver shortly after that match went down. Uh, the Asirin Portal, speaking of Chikara, a lot of Chikara faces uh, uh, tend to pop up in this group. So it's really mm-hmm. cool to see that see that happening as well. Um, also this weekend in the area, in down in West Newton in the Pittsburgh area, the big Seasons Beating 6 is going down. 
Um, of course, Sanjay Dutt, the, the cruiserweight champion, is going to return. Cuball Carmichael, the current champion. Generation Dead will be in action, the new tag team champions after that last show. Um, and if I can check out the latest on their event, I don't know what they have announced exactly. Championship match, of course. Uh, the ladies are in action with, uh, is that? Am I reading this right? Mickey Knuckles and Jesse mm. Bell Smothers. Mickey Knuckles, what do I know her from? Definitely a, a, a longtime women's wrestler. She was in. T- she had a, big, a brief run in TNA. That's what I thought. Was, yeah, uh, 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 that, that run ended with her breaking her leg in an IWA Mid South show. But, oh no. Um, yeah, no, but she's back now, and and, and she's good. Um, she's 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 definitely a, a really good talent, uh, uh, Mickey Knuckles. So. Awesome, awesome. Uh, again, a group that I think is really coming up and getting a lot of names involved, um, getting a lot of really interesting people coming in and, and, and uh, some good good local names as well. Uh, so you check them out at rwalive.com. And again, yes, we have their stuff on uh, pittsburghwrestling.com. Hey, uh, a plug actually, if you follow Sorgatron Media on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+, uh, you'll be seeing over the next few weeks, we started the first one today. There's still time if you're listening to us live. Uh, we had a best of IWC 2013 digital download for $2 if you use the uh, coupon code ADVENT2. We're doing a Sorgatron Media Advent Calendar Sale. <laughs> which means a different title or sale of some sort will happen all the way up through Christmas. Uh, I can tell you, since it's so close, actually, looking at the data, actually, this is actually live right now. There's a little bit of leeway in these codes, uh, so so bear with me. But uh, I know Advent 3 on, on the third day of Christmas here, December 3rd, will get you RWA Best of 2013, again, for $2 digital download at Pittsburgh Wrestling dot com um but again well you follow sorgatron media on on all your social medias and we'll be putting that out daily in some cases multiple times a day to make sure you don't miss it follow it get some cheap uh uh indie wrestling here vow iwc rwa titles will be involved over the next several weeks so please go check any of those out um i can tell you a lot of best ofs are going to be in the mix um, and like I said, titles representing all those companies. So if you, you've wanted to sample some of the stuff we're talking about from this area, this is going to be your opportunity uh, to do it for very, very cheap. So, uh, yeah, yeah, my little personal plug in there as well. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, please check that out. Uh, now, I know you you have a couple other uh Couple other indie, one, one, one more, couple more. I don't know, indie, indie. Yeah, uh, a couple. Uh, yeah, it's a couple. Oh, I'm um, gonna drink some more coffee over here. But fair, fair enough. Uh, we definitely want to talk about uh, our good friends at St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, who's oh having yes. A, uh, one of their biggest events uh, this weekend, Yuletide Terror. Obviously, their December event, uh, December 5th, which is this Friday, uh, in Alton, Illinois. Uh, two friends of the show are meeting in a two out of three falls match for the St. Louis Anarchy Championship. Gary J defending against Davey Vega. That will definitely be a very fun one. Uh, uh, definitely uh, Jojo Bravo, who we had a couple weeks on, will be on the show. He was originally scheduled to face Michael Elgin, uh, uh, of Ring of Honor. However, I believe uh, Elgin was pulled from the show by Ring of Honor uh, uh, in, in a slew of uh, some Ring of Honor talents that have gotten pulled from shows, which uh, is, is kind of sad because Jojo on our podcast kind of – uh, put some high stakes out there as far as uh, the stipulation for that match being uh, uh, him having to have a long conversation with Michael Elgin at an Olive Garden uh, about nothing that had to do with wrestling. Um, but yeah. man, they could have sold sold that video on RF Video. Made they could have ton. <laughs> I, I I I really I want that to happen. I just doesn't even it doesn't even have to be a stipulation for the match. I just want to see those two at Olive Garden. Um, but uh, I'm assuming Jojo Bravo will have a replacement uh, opponent. Uh, it hasn't been announced. Uh, uh, some other stuff. Uh, ACH will be taking on Kyle O'Reilly in a singles match. Uh, there will be a women's match between Angela Lane and Candice LeRae, making her St. Louis Anarchy debut, which that should be really, really great stuff. Uh, a lot of good people from St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, uh, they're, like I've mentioned many times before, they're definitely one of the top groups in the Midwest uh, to check out. So if you want ticket information, you can go to slawrestling.com. And like I said, that's Yuletide Terror, uh, December 5th, which is this Friday in Alton, Illinois. Wow. So definitely go check them out. Uh, I do. I, I also want to put out a bit of a plug for the stuff going on in Inspire Pro Wrestling because there is some cool stuff happening. We did announce the full card 
uh, for our next event, which is uh, uh, still a month away, but it's January 4th, uh, our Ecstasy of Gold 2 event, uh, which is sort of becoming our, our uh, you know, a regular event for us. It's our season premiere. Uh, should be some really cool stuff from there. Uh, Dirty and Dome defending his championship, his first defense of the championship since winning it back in August uh, against the former champion center for Nuki Palmer. Uh, who held the championship for a mere five minutes before uh, Dalton defeated him for it. So there's a lot of grudge, stuff, uh, grudge, you know, blood boiling going on uh, between these two, and it should be a fun one. But we also have a lot of really good matches on the card. Uh, Chuck Taylor will be making his return to Inspire Pro to take on Ricky Starks, which should be a phenomenal contest. Uh, we've got Veda Scott making her Inspire Pro uh, return. She'll be taking on Barbie Hayden for the NWA World Women's Championship. Uh, with some interesting stuff going on uh, uh, with how that match sort of come, came together. Uh, Kimberly uh, is making her Inspire Pro debut, uh, you know, regular at Shimmer, uh, Chikara, uh, Beyond Wrestling, uh, groups like that. She'll be taking on Jessica James, and that's going to be a really phenomenal matchup. Uh, and there's a lot of really good stuff on this card. We have our J-Crown Coronation Gauntlet to crown a new J-Crown champion. Uh, and, and this really does look like a really stacked event. So you can go to inspireprowrestling.com. Currently, you get tickets for that event. Uh, like I said, it's January 4th, uh, still a month away uh, in Austin, Texas. So uh, go check that out and, and, and go follow all things happening with Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, uh, we should be rolling out a couple of our events uh, uh, very soon, uh, our August event, Relentless. And on YouTube for free, we should be, be releasing the matches soon from uh, our Fun 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 Fest uh, weekend. So there's definitely a lot of stuff happening in the world of uh, Inspire Pro. So definitely go check us out. Awesome. Awesome. And as all the indie wrestling fit to talk about this week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great interview. Uh, once again, thanks to Moonshine Mantel for joining us. Please go follow him, real underscore Moonshine, I believe it is, on the Twitters. Yes. Uh, go check out all the indies. And let us know if there's any indies you're into that we're missing talking about. Uh, and uh, we, we do, we pride ourselves on being an interview show talking about injury wrestling. And we hope you've enjoyed uh, everything. We're going to try to wrap up uh, the, the year here uh, as big as we can, have a few ideas to f- uh, finish out the year. Uh, and of course, we'll have a lot of fun stuff with everything else with the Wrestling Man Show and everything as well. Uh, so it, I know it gets weird here towards December. I, I don't know. Some shows still running. You guys obviously taking a month off. Uh, but, uh, you know, really busy. So it, it, it's interesting to see what, what people do for, in, for indie shows around this time. Um, mm. but anyways, uh, Amen, he's at Amen too, please. Inspire pro wrestling, NWA ringside writer. Look at that guy. His resume, his LinkedIn page Man. is going to be amazing. It's going to be great stuff. Yeah, yeah, it, it's growing. It's growing. It's growing. You, you should look up my LinkedIn. I was, I was a, something made a slideshow out of my LinkedIn page today, and I'm looking at all yeah. the crazy crap I've worked at over the years. Um, you can check out everything with us. Mm-hmm. I, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Check out SorgatronMedia.com, Pro, uh, PittsburghWrestling.com, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, please uh, uh, subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the Wrestling Mayhem Show for all the shows on YouTube. Um, you can also drop a slime the good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Look up the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google+, and at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. And you can join us here live for our interviews and our chats at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central, at live.sorgatronmedia.com. I'm very cautious of my time zones now because I'm going to California <laughs> at the end of the month. That's going to really mess me up. We're getting clo- I'm going to get closer to Alex Cars. Not close enough, but closer. Closer. Um, <laughs> We're going to watch Monday Night Raw on delay like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want a big delay. <laughs> I guess it is. It, it's screwy. Man, California gets screwed for pro wrestling across the they board. Do. Except for they got pro wrestling. <laughs> Except growing. for PW- they got PWG. Pre- <laughs> PWG. That's why that's PW- WG is so amazing because that's a makeup for all the ills of pro wrestling in California. It, it really is. <laughs> so, anyways. We'll see what we get from that one. I haven't looked at the chat tab yet. For <laughs> I know he's in there. Um, so with that, thanks a lot, everybody joining us. Thanks, Hammond. Thanks, everybody. Uh, go support indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. 
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, 